In this video, we're going to learn about controlling a form design by using a sketch or by using a surface. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video we're going to carry on our Fusion 360 Forms Mastery, and we're going to learn about connecting to an existing sketch or a surface. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create those references. So I'm going to start in a new document by creating a sketch. I'm just going to select the top plane. We've already talked a little bit about creating forms and how using things like splines can be complicated because the number of divisions you need downstream are going to be a lot to capture that data. So for this example, I'm going to be using lines and arcs. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create some references. So I'm going to draw a vertical line and a horizontal line. Then I'm going to take my midpoint constraint, select each line, and snap them to the midpoint. We'll hit Escape to get off our constraint tool, and we'll turn these into construction using either the sketch palette or X on the keyboard. This is going to be the basis for whatever shape I create. Next, I'm going to use some straight lines, and again, I'm just going to draw them horizontal. These could be a mirror if you simply want to draw half, and you can mirror it across, but I'm going to just draw both. Use midpoint constraint again. Then I'm also going to use equal, and I'm going to give this a dimension using D on the keyboard. We'll say 150 millimeters. Next, I'm going to create a three-point arc. We're going to go from here to here and drag it out until we have tangency. Because the lines are symmetric about the origin, because of the constraints we place, they'll automatically have tangency applied, but you'll notice that the constraint is only shown on one side. If we try to apply it to the other side, we'll likely get an overdefined error, but just note because of all the other construction lines and constraints that we placed, it's automatically going to be tangent here. We can also use our sketch lines, in this case the construction lines, and drag them all the way out. And now you can see that we have complete control over resizing this. Now it's moving up and down based on our single dimension. So let's add one more. Again, D on the keyboard or sketch dimension. I'm going to place a 35 millimeter radius here. I'm going to finish my sketch. I'm going to be using both a sketch and a surface to define this. So let's go ahead and navigate to surfaces. Let's create an extrude off of this. I'm going to pull it down. The amount doesn't really matter in this case, but let's do 50 millimeters. And let's go ahead and add some taper. If we have five degrees, that's going to be five degrees of positive taper. That's going to be drafting outward. And that's more than enough for most designs, even if they have external surface textures. Generally between three and five degrees is what you need for a cosmetic side texture. And you can go all the way down to half a degree, depending on the depth of your wall and some other parameters. If you are making something that is molded, obviously you need to work with a production company. You need to find out what their constraints are for manufacturing. But in general, I like to stay about one degree for most plastic parts that are a reasonable size and up to three or five degrees if I want an external texture. Now that we have this surface, I want to do a few things. So this is a body and I'm going to first copy it. So I'm going to use Control C on my keyboard on a PC. You can also right click and copy. Or if you're on a Mac, I believe that's going to be uh, Command. So we're going to go ahead and copy that, and then we're going to right-click, and we're going to paste it. I'm going to move this extra body. You can move it in any direction. I'm going to move it in the Y direction. So now I have a copy. The next thing that I want to do is I'm going to convert one of them to a mesh. So we're going to go to Mesh. We're going to select the Tessellate option. We're going to select the first body. We can create quads, we can preview what this is going to look like, you can turn quads on and off, see what it looks like, and you can say OK. You'll notice that there is a warning, it's because it's not closed, it's an open mesh body, that's OK in this case. But now we have a surface body, we have a mesh body, and we have the original sketch. I'm going to take the mesh, I'm going to use move copy, I'm simply going to move it forward, we'll say OK, and now we have the sketch. So this is the basis for everything that we're doing here. Now that we've begun, let's go back to our solid tools and let's create a form. For the form, I want to take a look at the shapes that we're dealing with. They're relatively cylindrical, so we could use a cylinder. We could also use a box. 
You can pick on any of the other ones as well. Quad ball would be another good one that we can use. Any of these designs or shapes for these primitives will uh, lend themselves more or less to a specific shape. For this example, let's go ahead and let's start with cylinder. We're gonna start on the top plane and I'm just gonna draw it out, out here in space actually. Let's go ahead and make it 150 millimeter diameter and we'll hit enter. When we do that, we've created this new body here. And now what we want to do is we want to figure out how it works to attach it to these other various things. So I'm going to go into my bodies folder. I'm going to select this body and I want to copy it. Again, right click and copy or you can use control C and control V if you're on a PC. You can also use, I believe it's command C and command V on a Mac. We'll say OK and we'll repeat the process just control V again for me on a PC. So now we have these three things and we need to figure out what we can do to actually attach them. You'll notice right away that the sketch looks normal here. The surface has opacity, but the mesh body looks normal and the mesh body actually shows up in our bodies folder while this surface body doesn't. So there are a few things that we need to know here. There are a handful of tools and to get started, let's go ahead and hide some of the other bodies, but there are a handful of tools that we can use to help align to various different geometry. So we've got pull, and you'll notice that pull allows us to move to a face or a surface. Now this can be the surface of um, the extrude that we created, or it can be a mesh. We also have match, and you can see match here allows us to take the edge of a T-spline body, and we can match it with, a, uh, in this case, a sketch curve, which is going to be the, the 2D sketch that we have, or the edge on a solid or surface body. Now this one typically doesn't work on a mesh. Now sometimes the T-spline functionality updates and things will change. So that might not be the case, but let's go ahead and try this. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Modify Edit Form. I'm gonna go to a top view and I'm simply gonna pull this about centered on this design. And I'm gonna hide the sketch for now. I just wanna look at this mesh body. I'm gonna rotate this around. I'm gonna pull this up a little bit just so that we have a little bit more visibility here and we're gonna say, okay. Next, I'm gonna to go to modify and I wanna select the pull option. Now there are a couple things that we need to be aware of with pull. The target is either auto or selected targets. And then we have either the surface points, which we're looking at a smooth display by default or control points. So we're gonna leave all the default settings for now, auto and surface points, and I'm just gonna start selecting vertices and see what happens. As I do this, you can see they are moving over. Now, instantly, this is not quite the result that we would hope for. Uh, you can see that it's pulling them down to sort of the closest point, but it's not really giving us the result we want. So let's hit cancel. Let's right click and let's repeat that. We'll still do surface points, but this time let's do selected targets. The selected target is gonna be the mesh body and the vertices are going to be the ones we select. Now again, this is sort of auto projecting to the closest vertice that we can find. So you can maybe start to see that this really works well if we already are close to the shape that we need. If we have the same number of divisions, potentially the same or similar shape, then we can pull it together. But one thing you will notice is that this has no effect on the direction of these curves. Now, if I simply say, okay, and we just take a look at this result, it's not very good. Now, if I go into Modify Edit Form and I change my selection filter to Vertex, then we'll get these handles, and these handles actually allow us to change the direction of curvature, but what they don't allow us to do is to match the underlying shape. We don't have tangency control here. We can use this option here, this chain link, which allows us to put those handles back after we've messed them up, but that can be kind of hard depending on how we've manipulated them you will notice that they turn red after we move them and they're green initially. So if you haven't touched them or affected them, you can see they're still green. So let's say, okay, let's hide this body. Let's hide the mesh. Let's focus on the sketch next. So let's bring back our second copy. Again, we're gonna go to modify edit form. I'm gonna reset my selection filter to all and I'm gonna just pull this up and over. We're gonna go to a top view and looks like it's about centered, we'll say okay. So now let's figure out how we can get this to match our sketch. So again, modify. Remember that we had this option here called pull and we have this option called match. So we already looked at pull briefly, but let's take a look at match and see what that does. 
So the T-spline edge, this is where it differs because we're not selecting a vertex anymore or a set of vertices. We're going to double click this entire loop. The match edge is going to be based on either the profile, this plane that we can select, or this edge here. And you'll notice that this gives us a much better result. Uh, you can see where it originally started, that red edge, and you can also see where it ends. Now this is where the number of divisions really comes into play. Because we only had, I think, eight divisions on the cylinder, we're not quite able to match this sort of slot shape because we could match a cylinder or a cylindric profile, but we're not able to match in the straight sections. And again, we are connecting the smooth display vertices and edges. We're not talking about box display. Now, again, you can go back and forth between those, but again, the points that we're looking at right now, they're actually on the surface. We can preview this, obviously. We can turn this on and off. We have continuity, which is connected. And the reason it's connected is because we're dealing with the sketch. Continuity is not going to happen here because we have nothing to control it. Next, we can determine the, the distribution or the spacing of these vertices based on curvature or based on a uniform distribution. In a case like this, curvature is likely going to be a better option. We can alternate the alignment, which is going to try to flip them around. It's not going to really do much for us in this case. We have options like the fall off and tolerance values and deviation. And these will determine how much it's going to affect the shape and try to match what we selected. For example, fall off, if we increase this value, it's going to determine how far away it's going to begin to influence the shape. Now, remember, we were dealing with 150 millimeter diameter. So if we view this from a right hand side, you can see that if we increase this value, the fall off is further and further away, which means that it's going to take 100 millimeters before it no longer affects the shape. If we set this to a lower value like 25, then the shape that we created with the form body is going to stay and it's going to only influence for the first 25 millimeters or so and it's going to begin to fall away. For this example, I'm going to set it to 50. And I want to do one last thing. I want to try one more thing. So I'm going to deselect the match edges. And in this case, I'm going to select that face. When we select the face, nothing really changes in this case. But there are times when we select that sort of profile that we, we might want to use additional references to help control the shape. Sometimes it's good just to check those selections and make sure that it is what you want. Because you do have the available option with match to, again, use a sketch or use edges. So now that we've taken a look at that, let's hide that body and let's hide the sketch and let's bring back this body here. And again, let's move it into position like we did with all the others. So I'm going to move it up a little bit. I'm going to go to a top view, double click the mouse wheel, and I'm going to just simply pull it over the center about like it was for the others and say, OK. So now we want to see what happens if we try to take this shape down to a surface. And we're going to do this twice. So first, we're going to take a look at pull, and then we're going to take a look at match. With pull, again, we have our selected targets or auto targets. I'm going to use selected targets, and I'm going to use my surface. So you'll notice that I, I'm not able to actually select this. So what I need to do is I need to select the surfaces that are my target, and then I need to select the vertices that I want to pull to it. So you can see this is very similar to how it worked for the mesh. It was pulling down those vertices, you can see the tangency points floating around here in space. These are actually the points where the original edge was and it moved to, even though they look like those control points that we saw when we were using edit form. So I'm going to hit cancel on this one. I'm going to go to modify and I want to take a look at match. This time I'm going to double click that bottom edge and for the match edge, I'm going to select the upper edge of the surface. When we go to continuity, now you can see that we have tangency control, we have curvature control, and we also just open up a whole host of other options. So again, the number of divisions that we have on the surface is preventing us from actually matching that sketch or that, that um, extrude that we have. But in this case, this is the result that I'm looking for. I'm able to control not only where the T-spline body is connected, but also its direction. I have tangency and curvature control I can increase the weight or the influence of that. I can also modify the fall off value. So for example, 75 millimeters or 100 millimeters. 
and begin to just adjust the shape based on my requirements. I'm going to reset that tangency weight to 1. And I'm going to actually cancel this. And the reason I want to cancel this is because I actually want to subdivide this entire body. I'm going to select it. I'm going to go to subdivide. I'm going to change the insertion mode to exact. And I want to try to box select everything. I want to grab all the faces. You'll notice that it didn't grab everything. I'm going to go back, the rotate this around. And I want to specify four in each direction. Now, this is way too many. This is not something I would typically do when I'm trying to design a part like this. But let's go back to modify and match. We're going to double click that bottom edge. We're going to match the upper edge of our surface. We're going to control it with a curvature continuity. We're going to determine the fall off value if we need. We're going to modify the tangency weight. And we can also modify the spacing, either keep it uniform or based on the curvature. And you can see instantly that the result is quite a bit different. So I'm going to change the tangency weight to 0.5. I'm going to reduce it a bit. And I'm going to increase the fall off value. I'm going to change this to 75. And now what you're seeing is we've taken our T-spline body. I'm going to say OK for this one. We've taken our T-spline body. We've connected it pretty well to a surface. And we're using the tangency of the surface to control the direction of the shape. Now. In reality, what ends up happening is you are not able to ever exactly match that edge. But if you increase the number of divisions you have on your T-spline bodies, you can get pretty close. It's not perfect, but these are the tools that we have to work with when we're designing T-spline forms in Fusion 360. So keep in mind what we looked at here. We looked at adding it and, and actually mapping to a mesh body. We looked at mapping it to a sketch, and then we looked at also mapping it directly to a surface extrude. So in the majority of the cases, I would suggest that you consider using a surface extrude or the edges of a solid in order to control the direction and geometry of these T-spline bodies, where the mesh really comes into its own, really comes down to um, attaching it to the side of the mesh. So if you have a completely divided up mesh body, say you brought in a reference that's coming from an STL or coming from some sort of scan or export, if you want to attach vertices directly to it, that is where that mesh option comes into play. And using the option to pull directly to that really helps. Where we generally go with design is going to be using those surfaces to help us drive the direction, the tangency, the curvature continuity of our shapes. Where the sketch really comes into play is like you see here in the tooltip. If you're trying to match a profile shape of something and not really control the direction, that's really where the sketch comes in handy. We have to be extremely careful with the number of vertices that we have on our sketch though. You'll notice if, if you pay close attention to the tooltip, the number of white vertices that we see on the sketch which is generally based off a of spline, matches the number of edge divisions in the form body. So it's one of those perfect examples. And in most cases, that's not going to happen. You saw with our example that we really couldn't match the sketch because we had straight lines and we had arcs. If we just had arcs, it would be fine. If we had a lot more divisions, as you saw with this last example, it would probably be a bit closer. But again, having the tangency and curvature control by using a surface is really a better option. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Um, I plan on continuing this process and looking at some additional examples, figuring out how we can use form bodies to create these designs. If you have any questions that you need answered throughout the series, please let me know in the comments. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.